Hello everyone. I'm glad to present you our collaborative work on the use of open-ended evolutionary approach in developing novel tumor drug delivery systems. I will present the work, but it is done uh, in collaboration between our group at University of Novi Sad and uh, the Amit Steelman uh, at University of Bristol. First, a little bit of intro. Uh, what is the difference between drugs and drug delivery systems and why those drug delivery systems are, are needed? Uh, once you have some hypothetical drug molecule uh, that uh, show uh, fantastic promise in uh, treating some, some, some disease, <clears throat> Uh, you need to, to put it into a real clinical practice, of course. But uh, the, the difference between uh, promising in vitro results and uh, real in vivo obtained effects is huge. Uh, recently, we published uh, a review paper uh, in Nature Computational Materials uh, on uh, <clears throat> different scales uh, and transfer barriers in uh, <clears throat> distribution of drug delivery systems. And uh, here I will just briefly mention main phases. Uh, first, when you inject your, your substance in, into a body, uh, it goes into circulation. And uh, in the case of tumors, uh, uh, it should preferably uh, leave circulation at, at certain sites and accumulate at, at tumor sites. However, before that, during circulation, it can interact with uh, different uh, elements of blood. Uh, it can uh, be cleared out of organism uh, uh, through renal or spleen uh, clearance mechanisms. Uh, its diffusion is also uh, quite chaotic and depends on uh, fluid pressure, fluid velocity, uh, size and shape and uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, capillary networks and so on. However, eventually some uh, concentration of uh, those molecules uh, will leave circulation, uh, hopefully at the site of, uh, of a tumor. Uh, and then they're faced with uh, another set of problems, how to penetrate deep enough into a tumor's tissue uh, in order to, 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 to have some meaningful uh, therapeutic effect. There we have uh, uh, problems of uh, spatial distribution of vasculature, how, how deep and how, how diverse uh, it, it penetrates tumor tissue. Uh, then uh, uh, the composition and the size of the tumor because, uh, for example, uh, pancreatic tumor are uh, notoriously hard to treat uh, uh, partly because uh, uh, their tissue is uh, very rich in, in connective tissue that hinders <clears throat> uh, diffusion of, of additional molecules. And during this diffusion, we have a uh, last phase. Uh, uh, those molecules should, should actually enter the cells and uh, uh, release their toxic or, or, or inhibiting uh, effect. Uh, in order to enter cells, uh, uh, again, we have uh, different properties of, of cells and of uh, our substance uh, that, that should be taken into account. On top of that, uh, tumors are also very heterogeneous structures. And here you can see uh, profiling uh, of uh, one tumor type uh, with regard to their signaling pathways. And you can see well, if you only take this one dimension of heterogeneity, <clears throat> there are multiple aspects and patterns of it, how our drug will interact uh, uh, with uh, uh, and deal with uh, such heterogeneity is uh, usually unknown 
before you start experiments and uh, uh, sometimes uh, it can just uh, kill the development of drug. Mm -hmm. Finally, as if previous steps were not enough, uh, tumors are very well known to, to, to quite rapidly develop uh, resistance to treatments. Uh, mechanisms of resistance can be numerous uh, and uh, generally can be divided into genetic and non-genetic mechanisms. In genetic mechanisms, we have classical uh, evolution through mutation, uh, then genetic priming where uh, pre-existing uh, small subpopulation of cells uh, just happens to be resistant, but uh, due to the uh, therapeutic pressure, high therapeutic pressure, uh, they rapidly became dominant. In non-genetic uh, mechanisms, uh, most often uh, uh, we face uh, overexpression of uh, some genes uh, that can, uh, uh, for example, pump out uh, uh, internalized uh, molecule or uh, rapidly degrade it. But in any case, final result is that uh, if you are not fast enough in uh, eliminating the entire tumor, it will become resident. Uh, it will become uh, resistant. So, in summary, uh, very often ju just having a drug is not enough. Uh, however, you can modify some of its properties by, by attaching it to a carrier in order to develop so-called drug delivery system. How to do that? Well, that's the problem, because uh, uh, in order to, to do it in, in the most optimal way, we need to explore a huge uh, parameter space of, of uh, biological and tumor properties. And additional problem is that uh, this uh, parameter space is changeable due to development of resistance. <clears throat> Our idea uh, is uh, to use the uh, approach of uh, open-ended evolution uh, by uh, 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 developing a simulator where uh, tumor can uh, ongoingly generate adaptive novelties. Uh, and on the other side, we have uh, potential uh, drugs that can learn how to, how to follow those uh, changes and adapt to them. Uh, our implementation is quite simple. At the local scale, we just have multiple mutable bit strings, but it is embedded into, into quite complex systems, system of coevolutionary dynamic, uh, uh, which can produce some interesting results. Uh, so, our approach is uh, to use uh, agent-based modeling, uh, where we have uh, three types of agents. Uh, first one, uh, evolvable drug agents, and their goal is to learn to eliminate tumor cells or tumor agents, uh, while at the same time not harming healthy cells. Uh, those drug agents uh, can uh, recognize cells by observing their visible properties and basically they should learn to discriminate between uh, tumor cells and healthy cells uh, <clears throat> in order not to, to, to kill the later ones uh, but at the same time at the same time uh, uh, tumor cells can evade attack of drugs by mutating their uh, 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 bit strings at the surface of the cell and thus becoming invisible. Uh, once the cell is recognized by an agent, uh, the rest of uh, the dynamic is uh, modeled as a michaelis menten dynamics. Uh, sorry, something is messed up here. Uh, and uh, uh, 
uh, we have a, a set of additional par parameters that can be optimized during evolution. Uh, 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 as you can see, uh, their rate of association, rate of disassociation, and rate of internalization. So, in our simulations, uh, evolvable drug agents start as completely naive. They do not uh, know actually uh, what they should recognize, uh, uh, how to make discrimination, and so on. They have a very limited memory, maximum three spaces, and uh, Uniformly during simulations, uh, we got uh, 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 first interesting result that uh, the initially homogeneous population of available agents, once it start uh, exploring tumor and uh, the surrounding healthy tissue, rapidly became heterogeneous because uh, at each phase. They, 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 they can learn what, uh, what uh, they encounter, uh, but over time they uh, converge towards a small number of dominant sub subpopulations that are most efficient in, in dealing with the current uh, stage of evolution of two. Recently, uh, uh, we published the first paper uh, uh, where we explored uh, <clears throat> this idea. Uh, and uh, here is a, a segment of results from, from that paper. Uh, as you can see, we, we, we tested uh, several types of evolved agents. Uh, blue ones are those fully evolvable. Uh, drug agents that uh, should, can learn what's happening around them. Uh, then, just to have a, a, a comparison, uh, we have red agents uh, that uh, are non evolvable They are uh, just created with some uh, random strings uh, that they can recognize, but that's all. And uh, as you can see at the bottom panel, uh, as tumor evolves, their ability to recognize tumor cells rapidly declines uh, and after about 500 generations, they're practically useful. At the same time, fully evolved agents start with zero and quite fast in the first 100 generations, uh, they jump up high in recognition ability of diverse tumor cells and remain there. Also, as a comparison, we, we introduced uh, so-called uh, general agents uh, that are actually able to instantly recognize everything. Uh, and the, we put them there just to see what uh, uh, unrealistic but ideal case would look like. And as you can see, uh, <clears throat> the shape of curves so with uh, green and blue agents is pretty much the same, just of course generalized agents are much more efficient uh, in, uh, in this case in keeping the ratio of mutated tumor cells at, at bay, and in this case, at keeping the ratio of resistant cells in the tumor also under control. Uh, however, uh, this is quite far from a, a real useful application. and. Uh, that's why uh, we, we made some several steps further. First, uh, uh, we wanted to, to test whether the, this abstractly obtained 
agents uh, uh, have some actual value uh, within uh, the boundaries of uh, real parameters. So that, that's why uh, we divided our simulator into a learning mode where they can just uh, freely explore state space. And from time to time, the best candidates are taken, injected into simulation mode where uh, uh, things are much more complicated because uh, uh, simulation simulation mode is uh, spatially extended uh, within uh, uh, real spatial dimensions, uh, real diffusion boundaries, and uh, 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 when when there uh, those agents uh, actually parameters of those agents are mapped into into a, a, a real uh, biochemical ranges of uh, diffusion speed uh, association dissociation and internalization rates what we got there is uh, shown here as you can see we have uh, cell one two three and four up to six uh, it uh, indicate uh, layers of tumor depth uh, they're able to, to, to penetrate into. And uh, here you can see that uh, uh, the dynamic of internalization of, of particles over time is uh, uh, quite similar, uh, but the number rapidly declines as, as we go deeper. But what is uh, most important, uh, in all layers of depth where nanoagents were able to penetrate, the number of internalized agents uh, was large enough to actually kill a cell. Uh, also, we were quite happy to, to, to observe that the distribution of uh, parameters we obtained as a result of this abstract evolution uh, is uh, actually quite similar to those used in uh, uh, synthesis, synthesis of real drug delivery systems uh, and also the parameters obtained via uh, uh, much more elaborate deterministic modeling. Uh, so that, that's uh, our uh, promising results that uh, encourage us to, to, to focus our further efforts in, in uh, working on closing the gap between uh, the simulator and the uh, real preclinical investigations. Uh, and uh, we are uh, mostly uh, now focused on developing uh, uh, even detailed mapping between uh, these parameters and the uh, corresponding biochemical counterparts and also on uh, uh, developing a more detailed uh, model of uh, tumor resistance development. And uh, uh, ju just uh, a nod to our funders, uh, this work is a part of a European project uh, called Evolvo Platform for Programmable Nanoparticle-Based Cancer Therapies. And uh, I will be glad to take any questions. Thank you.